good evening everyone the difference between a good movie and bad movie is often the script unless the movie happens to have bobby devil in which case it's bobby devil similarly in your script the difference between a good speech and bad speech can be your script which is why we are conducting this session today to help you in drafting your speeches in in your in your assignments or projects to come and for that we have brought in someone fabulous a fabulous speaker he has been with us in our earlier meetings toastmaster dipankar das he is straight from he's a member in vadodara club and he is also he also happens to be a uh, in the learning and development team in reliance so clearly if mukesh amani trusts him to learn things for him and his people definitely we can learn from him today and without any further ado i would now like to invite toastmaster dipankar das to please start this this session a big round of applause please thank you thank you so much gorov i hope i am audible and visible and welcome everyone it's really great uh, Back in my hometown, native place, I was part. I am part of Mumbai Toastmasters, and it has been quite some time as I was discussing with Gaurav and Siddharth that I haven't been part of the club meetings. But it's always great to be a part of any Toastmasters club. And as the, you know, the contest season is coming here, and also for a lot of people who are joining new, it's so much the essence of public speaking is the. of making the speech and that is the context what uh, i will be talking today and let me give you a story a story when i was also new into toastmasters i had just joined toastmasters few months into toastmasters and by god's grace i got a chance to contest in the uh, international speech contest which is held at a club level then it goes to the area level the different hierarchies of toastmasters and at that point of time i started my journey from vadodara gujarat i was a member there and i reached the division level contest and there was the first time and i had no knew about the speech techniques there but when i reached the division level and when i saw other people performing from mumbai from goa from gujarat there was a time i learned a lot and that is the essence of those masters you learn in every interaction there was a time i learned how important is storytelling in those masters there was a term i learned that whenever you start something why not start the story and that's why today to so without much ado i will share a ppt with everyone on the screen i call it the power speaker series what will differentiate you from others as a power speaker and i talk about specific skills since we have a lot of people who have joined new i would also like to talk about certain formulas which will help you start writing your speech how does it make it easy to write a speech and one i need one important promise from everyone you will ask questions that is your gift back to me for taking this session and no question is right or wrong you can ask anything that comes to your mind but just keep your question till the end of the session i will take it at last so let us begin today's session i call it the power speaker series and this time i will be talking about the secrets of speech craft yeah i hope everyone is ready so the first thing any any adventure you go into anything you do the first thing the first clarity that should be in your mind is the purpose what is the purpose and along with that it is very important that whenever you speak you speak to express you don't speak to impress because whenever you speak to impress others it's very well shown in the speech speech to express speak to serve you want to serve something whenever you are on the stage there are 15 there are 100 people there are 600 people on the other side of the other side of the stage as audience they are expecting something from you they are giving their precious 5 minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes to you and it is your obligation it is your responsibility to give something they should have some message to take back from this speech okay i will talk about the basic structure how should you structure a speech you should you should have heard about opening body and conclusion i give you a simpler 
tell what you are going to tell them tell them tell them what you have to tell okay there is a central theme of your speech which you want to tell so at the opening of the speech you tell what you are going to tell like when i started i said today i am going to talk about the secrets of speech craft so i told you that is the part of the opening then the body will consist of all the central idea of all the supporting materials that you will have and the conclusion you will reiterate your message you will tell what you have told so simple three parts of your speech opening body and conclusion in the opening you tell what you have tell in the body you are telling the central theme what is the actual purpose of your speech and at the end you are reiterating your message so simple keep it very simple tell what you are going to tell tell them and tell again what you have told so we break it into three structures now it will come to your mind how should i start writing a speech where do i start at so first you have to decide on what central theme you are going to talk on so there are a lot of ideas you can talk on and when you decide always think in your mind what i am going to give the audience after 15 minutes of the speech what is the audience going to take back from the speech always think that when you are writing the speech am i giving a message that becomes the central idea of the speech everyone might have heard about heard lot of speeches specifically the world championship of public speaking if you have not you can go to youtube and see we have mohammad katani mohammad katani central theme was how powerful our words and his entire speech was crafted in that way the central theme was that words can make a big change in anyone's life if you saw darren page speech who was from singapore his central theme was you have there is a the inner bully in us you have to overcome the inner bully something which stops us from you know going ahead so you have to first decide when you are crafting the speech what is the central theme of the speech once you write down the central theme then write five six sentences supporting statements to the speech so how many statements you will have one is the central sentence the central theme and then you will have five other statements one two three four five now let me give you an example let's say i am crafting a speech there is a speech contest coming or even any speech that i want to craft first i will think what do i want to give people let's say i want to talk about charity that every individual should do charity so my central idea will be that every person do charity that will be my central idea then i will write five supporting sentences along with it who are the people who have done charity i will explain about that what good happens to us when i do charity that will be my the third sentence my fourth sentence will be what benefits the society will get for my charity and last will be the message i want to give to the individual so just to keep it very plain simple write one central idea and then divide it into next four or five statements which you support it with this is the first uh, task that you have to do the second is arrange them in order so in this first step you can go as wild as you want you can write everything that is coming to your mind in those five sentences but the second sentence you arrange them in order which will go first am i going to give my speech chronologically in terms of appearance in time or am i going to give my speech in terms of logically so you have to decide and you have to keep or keep you know first i will give examples then i will give stories so when you are arranging them this five sentences you have to arrange them in order as you want to write the speech now once you arrange them once you arrange this root i lose outline outline sequentially and logically the third step is to expand upon these points what do i have till now till now i have five set statements one is a central statement and each five statement i have expanded i have them sequentially 1 2 3 4 5 and now i expand them how will you expand them you expand them by putting examples you expand them by having sequence you expand them by having stories you expand them by having quotes supporting materials so you have to gather supporting materials you have to have data you have to have statistics you will just put in on it 
So this is the third step. The fourth step, and I would say the most important step is the introduction. Why is the introduction important? Whenever someone is going on the stage to speak, nobody knows him until or unless he's an invited speaker. Or sometimes people don't know the invited speaker also. So within two, three seconds, you have to grab the attention of the audience so that they find you credible, so that they want to listen to your speech. So the introduction or even the first three, four seconds of the introduction is very important. And that's why whenever you are going, whenever you see any uh, international speech winners, they always have a prop in their introduction. Muhammad Katani had that cigarette. Darren Pei had that underwear. Pananjay Hetarachi had a flower in his hand. Why were they taking it? We call it creating a spike. And it is, you know, done by everyone in, uh, in communication. You hear a radio jockey speaking, you'll start like, good morning, boy. What he's doing? He's creating a spike. So whenever you are also speaking, you have to develop a spike. The first three, four sentences, first three, four words, you have to grab the audience attention. It can be through a prop. It can be through a story. It can be through a question. You can just ask a question. They're starting, how many of you are interested in knowing about public speaking? Just giving you an example. Even in Ananjay Atarasi's speech, if you have seen, he asked, how many of you have emotional mothers with a raise of hand? He was getting the attention of the audience. So the most important step is developing an introduction. How you develop an introduction? What is common in all your statements? You check that. What is coming back again and again? When I'm writing a speech on charity, charity is becoming common again and again. And might be I can uh, give my speech title, charity begins at home. And then I can create a spike. So you have to create that spike and you Decide which tool are you going to use to create that spike. I can suggest it can be a personal anecdote. You start the story or it can be asking a question to the audience. That way you will grab the attention of the audience at the very beginning. So that is develop an introduction. The next important part is develop a closure. As important is the introduction because it gets you connected with the audience. So important is the closure because you need to have a lasting impression. So what should the closure have? The closure should summarize your speech, what you spoke. And secondly, it should call everyone for action. There should be something which, you know, excites people, call everyone for action. You can just say, that I gave an example of charity. You can say, let us now promise that everyone will do charity for a better Gohati, for a better Assam. We can, you know, create that emotion in everyone's mind. So always remember three parts of the speech, the opening, which is very important for creating the spike, the closure, which will give a message because you want to serve the audience and the body, which will have the main material. So tell them what you want to tell them opening, tell them in the body and tell them what you already told them, the close. Now you will ask me how to make the body. See, the body will have data, the body will have stories, body will have all the points that you want to express, you want to give to the people. It's the main point. But it's like a sandwich, opening, closing, and the body. And the filling has to be very important. Okay? One very important thing, I hope you can see the word in this PPT, it's transition. What differentiates a good speaker with a great speaker? And the answer is transition. If you are able to do a smooth transition, let me guarantee you, you are a great speaker. Many a times, why people lose their audience is only when they are doing a transition. Why do you need a transition? And what is a transition? Like I said, you are opening. You have to move to the body. Within the body, there will be different concepts you are talking about. You have to do a transition from one idea to another idea. And third, when you are closing, you also need to do a transition then. So whenever you are going from one idea to another idea, you have to do a transition. What is a transition? I give the example of a train. You might have seen different bogies of a train. Now, use this metaphor to understand each bogey is like an idea. How are bogies connected? They have a connector if you have seen. Your transition is your connector. So whenever you are transitioned between two ideas, 
it should have common points between both the ideas. And then only you can try do a transition. Let me give you an example here. Example will help you understand. Let me say I am drafting a speech on charity. And I say, uh, I have seen that in Guwahati, people are doing a lot of charity and the charity is really benefiting. So I talk about Guwahati there. Then I would like to compare the charity in Guwahati with let's say some other city, which is, uh, let's say Tinsukia. I want to compare it to Tinsukia. So these are two different ideas. How do you make a transition? You make a transition with something which is common. So I might say, I have already seen a lot of people doing great work in Guwahati. I have also seen people doing great social service in Tinsukia. So you had a common point where making the transition. So make the transition, have some common point. Don't just jump from one idea to another. The moment you jump from one idea to another, you lose your audience. You remember this. So your transitions are most important. When you write down your speech, see where the transitions are needed. Work out the transition. Work very hard on the transition. The day you have got the transitions, grip on the transitions. It's you are there. Now I will talk about tools for impactful speech. How do you make a speech impactful? And thereby I give a bridge to you. Why do I give a bridge? Every speaker is on one side of the bridge and the audience is on another side of the bridge. Now the problem is that the bridge that you see is stationary. This cannot be changed. But when you are a speaker, your bridge is dynamic. It's changing every second. And your bridge is a bridge of your words, bridge of your vocal variety, bridge of, bridge of your body language, is the bridge of communication. And this bridge of, bridge of communication is very volatile. You need to keep on doing stuff to keep the audience attention. Today in this virtual mode also, I have to keep on using certain or other tactics to keep your attention. The moment you make some mistake, the attention is gone. This bridge will break. How do you keep the attention of the audience? We'll talk about it. Before that, I want to want you to understand how to make connection with the audience. And here I give you a wonderful rhetorical uh, triangle, which is given by none other than Mr. Aristotle, a very important philosopher. He told us that there are three ways to connect with an audience. He actually told us there are three ways to persuade your audience. Let us say there are three ways to connect with your audience. It is ethos, pathos, and logos. This is Aristotle triangle. I will explain one by one and you will see every speech there is an element of ethos, pathos, logos. What is that? Ethos is credibility. How do you build credibility in your speech that is called ethos? For example, when I came on this virtual stage, Gaurav gave my introduction. So he was trying to build a credibility for a speaker that is ethos. I am building a credibility for myself. How can I build more credibility? I can bring in data that brings in more credibility. I can bring in might be quotes from some uh, other important credible people. So whenever you are building credibility in your speech, that is at course. You are trying to connect with your audience with credibility, data, importance. The second is pathos. Whenever you are trying to arouse the emotion of the speak audience, that is pathos. How do you arouse the emotion of the audience? You talk about emotional stuff. Have you seen politicians speak? I can't talk political stuff. But have you seen how emotions are so strong? There was a person named Hitler and he made people kill one, kill and murder and do genocide one whole community. How did they do it? Pathos. Attack the emotion of people. And third is logos. Logos is logic. Our human mind responds to credibility, ethos, emotion, ethos, or logic, logos. Have you gone to a TEDx speech? You might have not known the speaker, but you will listen to them. Why? Because they are talking logic. Today, when I am talking about ethos, ethos, logos, I am talking logic. If I am able to explain it to you, you will connect to me. When I, get, when I was talking about the five steps, if I was able to uh, attend to your logic, you will connect to me. That is logos. Whenever you are talking logic, whenever you are talking about something logical, the brain accepts it. So you have to decide what kind of speaker you are, what kind of how to bring that credibility or how to bring that emotion. Many a time people bring emotions in their speech to that holds. And logic is always there. 
So this was the Ethos Petros logos, and I can request you, you can go through various, you know, various uh, speeches in YouTube also and try to identify which was Ethos Petros logos. So I have one speech here, and I would like everyone to try to identify whether it was Ethos Petros or logos. I'll just share the screen. And it's a very wonderful movie. It won the Oscar for the hero, and it's based on an Indian you know, great man from India, which is Mahatma Gandhi. Just hold on, let me share this. I hope my slide is visible. So I'll play this video. You just have to identify the ethos, pathos, logos. Very simple, ethos, credibility, pathos, emotion, and logos, logic. When is the speaker trying to ethos, pathos, emotion, or logos, logic, or when he's trying to gain credibility? There it goes. Is it audible? Just view it is a four minute small speech. I want to welcome you all, every one of you. We have no secrets. Let us begin by being clear about General Smuts' new law. All Indians must now be fingerprinted, like criminals, men and women. No marriage other than a Christian marriage is considered valid. Under this act, our wives and mothers are whores, and every man here is a bastard. He has become quite good at this. And a policeman passing an Indian dwelling, I will not call them homes, may enter and demand the card of any Indian woman whose dwelling it is. <laughs> Understand? He does not have to stand at the door. He may enter. I will not allow I, I swear to Allah, I'll kill the man who offered that insult to my home and my wife. And let them hang me. Nothing. Kill off your officials before they disgrace one Indian woman. Then they might think twice about such laws. In that cause, I would be willing to die. I praise such courage. I need such courage because. In this cause, I too am prepared to die. But, my friends, there is no cause for which I am prepared to kill. Whatever they do to us, we will attack no one, kill no one. But we will not give our fingerprints, not one of them. They will imprison us, and they will fine us, they will seize our possessions, but they cannot take away our self-respect if we do not give it to them. Have you been to prison? They beat us and torture us. I say they beat I am asking you to fight. To fight against their anger, not to provoke it. We will not strike a blow. But we will receive them. And through our pain, we will make them see their injustice, and it will hurt, as all fighting hurts. But we cannot lose. We cannot. They may torture my body, break my bones, even kill me. Then they will have my dead body, not my obedience.
i hope uh, the video was helpful for you all to understand the ethos pepos logos triangle so if you have seen it was the movie gandhi and the actor was bad kinsley and at the very beginning of the speech and basically all the political speakers use pathos a lot at the very beginning of the speech uh, the speaker used pathos trying to get the emotion of the audience by talking about women their wives and how they can be treated very badly so the the entire emotions were aroused and they were high on emotions but later part as the speech moved ahead a lot of logos was used used like you cannot kill them and logical answers were given when pathos was used people were high on emotions when logos was used people were just calm down listening to the audience so my request you cannot immediately start writing speeches on ethos pathos logos but just be sensitive to it just know that whenever a speaker is talking which tool is he using is he, is he or she using credibility or is he or she using emotions or he or she using logic and then what happens when you are crafting your speech speech craft is also an art it takes time it takes time to build it it comes with practice use more and more of your speech crafting tools and you develop it so then you will be able to understand okay here i can put some ethos here i can put some pathos here i can put some logos then you can play around it so that was the basic reason i want to take this triangle because i think it is one of the fundamentals people use it for negotiation skills people use it for management decisions people also use it for speech craft use it the next is as i said we need to keep the bridge between the audience and the us very intact how do you do that i will also talk some about certain uh, you know techniques these are techniques which you can use immediately when the bridge starts breaking i have seen the most powerful tool is story whenever you are telling a story people get glued to you that is number 1 number 2 is data since i talked about logos the moment you give logos sorry data you both attack logos as well as ethos which is credibility as well as logic data has the both so you can use data scientific data for example if i am crafting a speech on charity i can say 29% of people in guwahati do charity would you like to come and be make this number to 35 see it will have a different connect with the audience next is data the third is quote you can use quote from mahatma gandhi from you can say i for an i makes the whole world blind you can use certain quotes this quote immediately connect with the audience because they respect they have credibility for the person who wrote that and last asking question always ask question you can simply ask with a raise of hands can i see how many believe that charity will change the society and what happens when you ask a question people think oh my god they are asking something to me i have to attend it so these are the basic techniques now what happens even after using them your bridge is breaking what do you do then then you use certain advanced techniques i'll give you the first one is turn on the siren it's called creating an urgency you say time is running out you know 2020 is coming like in 2011 you could have said 2012 we are going to die let us do some charity now before die you create a situation you turn on the siren we have limited quantity of resource have you seen what will happen to the society if we don't do charity now our own assam might be facing great difficulty we have to come up do a charity turn on the siren make people feel that something wrong will happen if that doesn't happen resources are gone this creates a sense of emergency and whenever a sense of emergency is created people will listen to you. that is point number 1 point number 2 is a revelation technique it is basically used by magicians showmen what you do you create a sense of mystery wherever there is a sense of emergency here here there is a sense of mystery you can say what i am going to tell next will surprise you so people will think oh my god this he or she is going to tell something which is going to surprise me so let me listen or you can tell i am now going to give you a secret that will change your life you might have seen these speakers on stage everywhere they use this technique so use a revelation technique you tell as if you are going to tell something the people don't know because speaker and the audience is always a power game and you need to have the power in your hands as a speaker as if everything fails 
there is one sure sort solution which never fails that is humor use humor now what, how do you use humor there is another vast topic but use humor craft your speech have some sprinkles of humor laughter there and it always brings the audience back so these are the basic tools and techniques that we generally use but i would say that when you are starting as a speaker or starting your learning journey the basic thing that you have to keep in your mind is the structure of the speech the moment you have the structure of the speech intact all these various techniques will be taken care of the structure of the speech is very simple opening body and conclusion so take care of the structure of the speech use materials use data use humor use different techniques that you want to use and that will make your speech really one so i have come to the end of this session i am open to any questions that you have anything related to speech craft basically this sensitization i will keep it i'll just run through the slides one so that it's you know this five step i really like this five step and i have seen lot of people benefiting from this because generally we find it very difficult that how to start the speech craft so write the five steps the first central statement and then the other statements connected to okay. dibangar i have a question please yeah <laughs> yeah dibangar uh, could you please expand on uh, transitions okay Can you give more okay. examples sure sure so whenever you are talking about transition just remember there has to be a common point between the transitions okay so whenever there is no common point between the transitions the bridge breaks let me give you an example abhijit can you can you give me some uh, might be you have given a speech can you give me two ideas in any speech i will show a transition um well uh, uh, there are as uh, the most recent speech that i had given was uh, about about the different kinds of leaders then we have uh, democratic leaders who take everyone's opinion before making a decision then we have uh, authoritative leaders who are much that more knowledgeable do. That do. yeah that will yeah. this will i'll just show you so you have two ideas the first idea is the idea of a democratic leader and the second idea is the idea of the authoritative leader now these are two different ideas though the common point is leadership so uh, democratic leader talks about that you take everybody's opinion when you want to take uh, a decision whereas autocratic leader takes you know listens only to himself or herself now when you make a transition between them you first have to find a common point and the common point is leadership so you have to make a transition by talking about leadership so you say one type of leader which i really like is a democratic leader because a democratic leader takes the opinion of each and every one to make a judgment but don't you think there can be other forms of leadership i'm making a transition now but don't you think there can be other forms of leadership as well the next form of leadership that i'm going to talk which is different from a democratic leader see i'm connecting here which is different from a democratic leader is the autocratic leader i i still kept the audience the bridge intact why because i am not immediately getting go democratic leader i am holding the hand of democratic leader then i hold the hand of autocratic leader so find the connecting points don't immediately jump from one idea to another or you can simply say let us hear about another lead type of leadership which is different from you know uh, democratic leader keep the elements and if you are unable to keep the elements keep the words words are very powerful thank you that was a wonderful question i have a question dipankar yeah go on so uh, this is something that uh, haven't been not related to what you have said uh, mm -hmm. still so when you are drafting a speech so in, in when you are delivering a speech one of the most important tool in delivering is voice modulation so i often struggle with yeah. this when you are drafting the speech do you frame your thoughts your ideas your sentences keeping voice modulation in mind so that you know you have some effective voice modulation to make the speech just come out wow or voice modulation is something just you do after the drafting is done drafting is drafting and after you are done with your drafting then you think about voice modulation okay good question again gorab see i believe it's a personal choice it's how you have been drafting your speech because it will come naturally to you after some point of time saying that if you want 
one formula which will help you go to voice modulation faster what i have been following is that keep the drafting of speech independent from voice modulation because your content is the main part in your speech and when your content is the main part i strongly believe the content should be very pure and when you want the content to be very pure you do not impose restrictions there now the moment you impose restriction you don't think why the king like a poet king like a storyteller you know poet and storyteller don't have foundations they don't have boundaries they can write anything they can create anything think like them when you are creating don't keep any foundation where i have to put voice modulation nothing like that once you have created your speech next you take up the speech go in front of camera or go in front of the mirror and then practice she where it requires and voice modulation a very vast topic but an important delivery is very important in speech and why delivery important always remember the fundamental the bridge has to be intact that is the fundamental and for the bridge have to be intact you cannot be monotonous the worst thing that a speaker can become is a monotonous speaker and to break monotony what we do as i gave lot of techniques revelation technique breaks monotony turn on the siren breaks monotony humor breaks monotony the quotes breaks monotony data breaks monotony what else breaks monotony you know voice modulation the moment you have a tempo of your speech when you start ladies and gentlemen let us talk about charity in court so you did a voice modulation there and people you know will be glued to your speech so use that often thank you gaurav that is a wonderful question yeah hi any other question yeah i'm so sorry um so you just said that you know quotes break the monotony of your speech i mean i mean when you were explaining it to gaurav but i really i'm new to this which is why it might be a silly question uh one i don't understand if a speech needs quotes from other people i mean you said it gives it credibility and it breaks the monotony which makes sense but do speeches necessarily need quotations and also yeah. uh, do you need big words to make a speech i mean the idea of a speech is to let it connect to people that you're talking to right i mean so is there a need to use big phrases that most people will not understand i mean i might be a fan you might be a fan of mahatma gandhi but i might not be a fan of mahatma gandhi you know so that's what i wanted to know wonderful wonderful question sanjana now see uh, how i think this thing is that you are like an army and you have certain weapons in your arsenal and for a communicator these weapons are quotations these weapons are the revelation technique these weapons are a storytelling these weapons are data so these are the various weapons now you as a speaker the see the how you will be differentiated from other speakers is your use of all these weapons in your arsenal when do you want to use it as you rightly said you might be uh, talking about so mahatma gandhi generally universally accepted so i generally use it you might have a quote of lenin or a stalin which might not be popular some place so it entirely depends how you want to use this technique i am just putting in front the technique it's not necessary it's not a formula that you have to put it on but the formula is that you have to create a force that force logos you have to create some bit of emotions you have to create some bit of logic and you have to create credibility now how you create is depending upon you there are many speeches that are given without quotes also yes, i i generally avoid quotes to be very frank but it helps people to connect because people think okay is using quote so at a subconscious level a click happens so it's not necessary it's not 100% that you have to use it but these are techniques and you have to decide you are the army you are the soldier you have to decide which uh, whether i am using a pistol or whether i am using a tank or whatever you are using so you have to decide that all right thank you so much my pleasure and it was not at all a silly question it was a very good question Salish has something to ask you, Salish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a question. Uh, uh, how important is it to? Uh, I won't say memorize, but uh, when you practice, because at times when you practice a lot, it comes out as a memorized speech. And how do you balance it? I want to make it more extemporaneous rather than uh, memorized. 
So, what's your technique for that? Okay, that was also a good question, Shailesh. Now, what happens when you don't memorize? Uh, the most important thing for a speaker, as I talked about, ethos is credibility. If you forget your speech when you are delivering, or if it just looks like as if you are reading some scriptures from some books, then automatically your credibility is lost. Now, your confidence on your speech, speech comes with practice. So rather than memorizing or writing the whole speech, when you practice, you practice as points. I gave you the five statement formula. So you just remember the five statements. And what you are going to speak inside that, you can create it. Now that come, also comes with practice. So after you are given say a 30 or a 40 speech, it will become more easy for you. But for new beginners, just do one thing. Don't always write the entire script. If, if you have this problem that it might look as something you are memorizing, you just write the points. Point one, I'm talking about charity. Point two, I'm giving some data on charity. Point three, I am talking about my personal experience with charity. And then you talk. See, the best part is you are in Toastmasters. And if you miss a speech, if you make some mistake, this is the best place to make it. So that outside, you can just shine. So all the formulas here. Yeah, one more thing. I had something from uh, what Sanjana said. Uh, I would like to carry yeah. on there. So oftentimes what happens with me is that uh, when I'm, uh, let's say, drafting a speech, I, I find a beautiful quote. But the person may not be mm -hmm. that well-known or it's not a Mahatma Gandhi or an Albert Einstein or Sachin Tendulkar. Let's say he is Tim Robbins or let's say uh, you know, some other person who may be not not that that much popular with the people in our club or in, in mm. India or maybe in the part of in, in that part where I am giving the speech. So how do you if I have mm. a quote that is very beautiful and suits my speech perfectly, but I find that the person who has said the quote is not that popular and I don't want to go waste my time in explaining who this person is. I don't want to say is said by Tim Robbins and Tim Robbins is so and so in a five minute speech, I only have so much time. So how do you balance that? Do you leave out that quote or do you leave out the name of the person? How do you do that? Don't leave out the name of the person, but you can leave out explaining people who who is that person. So let people find that out. I would say there is something under the credibility score. So if it is Mahatma Gandhi, his quotes will be very high in credibility. If someone of a local leader, his uh, credibility score will be less. If someone you don't know, the credibility score might be lesser. But if you find this speech, this sorry, this quote will add any ethos, ethos logos to your speech, use it. If you find that this material is supportive, use it. And don't, you don't need to explain who Kim Robbins is. Don't go into that. That dilutes the entire speech because that is not the purpose of the speech. The purpose, always remember what is the main purpose of the speech and you have to stick to it. So no need to explain who is Kim Robbins or any, even if you find someone from Afghanistan with a wonderful quote, use it. No need to explain who is the person. People assume by themselves that, you know, some good person will be only giving. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Would you like to ask? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Dipankar, I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How, how do you choose a topic for a speech? I mean, that is where my main problem starts. Even before I writing comes later. How do you choose what to talk about? Wonderful, wonderful. I think most of the people have this. And this is one of the highest questions I always have when I do such kind of sessions. See, what is the main purpose? The main purpose is to make an impact to your speech. So how can you make an impact to your speech? You have to see what topics will make the best amount of impact. So it can be topics that are very relevant nowadays. So people will connect easily. So your task of ethos, ethos, logos decreases to some extent. So topics which are very much you know, very much accepted by audience, which are emotional, which are readily in the market nowadays. Those can be one topic. Second are topics which you are good at. So I might be good at few things. I have, see, every individual is a pers different personality. Every different personality has their likes, dislikes, preference. And with those likes, dislikes, and preference, you get different, uh, your absorption, your knowledge. You have a different you know, dictionary of a library where you, every person is a Wikipedia. So, Siddharth might have certain set of preferences. Shailesh will have certain different set of preferences. You choose what you are good at or what you like. 
whenever you are talking about something you are good at something you are like what is the benefit first you are an expert in it you have already the material which you want to give supporting material is already there so that can be one way so you can list down so i, I write poems so i like write uh, on poetry so i can give a speech on poetry i follow a lot of leadership i have been in toastmasters i have had a lot of leadership position so i can also love to talk about leadership see what your hobbies are what's your preference are there are many people who have lot of different hobbies pick things from them that can be one social causes social causes immediately help people to connect with emotions ethos sorry ethos so that can be one so relevant topics which are in the market now this you have lot of relevant topics now there can be tiktok it can be so in toastmasters we can't talk about politics otherwise to bahut sara hi ho jata hai but there are lot of topics in the market which is very hot in the market secondly your preferences what you like your love what you like i think still remember if people are there the first meeting i have attended in guwahati toastmasters i spoke about uh, lachit borkon because uh, i i really admire him as a leader so i spoke about him that was on leadership so and third is a socially relevant topics which are always relevant which hit people so you can choose it that way I hope you. I have answered this, Siddharth. Yeah, yeah, I think it's give, given me at least some pointers to start yeah. up with. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I have another question. Yes, it's, please. Yes, please. Again, something you've already answered, but I need a little bit more clarity on it. Uh, it's something relating to what Siddharth had just asked. Uh, so I have a topic. It might not be very interesting. Okay. So I. as a writer i prefer write i prefer writing topics which are very you know which have a moral uh, with them which are not always very interesting i mean honestly when when you sit to write it down and you read it as a reader it's not very good how do you elevate that i mean you might have a good topic or you might have a great topic at hand you know you use ethos pathos and you use your logos also but not everybody is good at that or picking up things from around what is happening and all of that so how do you elevate it and i don't use quotes again so that's another <laughs> <laughs> so, i won't talk about quotes done okay uh, see the first uh, <laughs> sentence that i started the training today uh, the workshop today was speak to express not to impress and this is a fundamental that the moment you speak to express you can impress So when you say that you have certain speeches which are good at morals, but people might not find attractive, so the difference comes there. Always you speak to serve. When you give some people some moral, subconsciously at a conscious level, they are taking back something, and it will definitely. Don't think that speeches which have morals will not be attractive to people. Speak to express, and when you are speaking to express, and you start, you said you have started your journey here. I promise you by your Um, 11 or 12 speech, you will see the difference in yourself in those masters, and you will get a lot of answers that you have right now. Inquisitiveness and curiosity are so very important; it is there in you. So this inquisitiveness and curiosity will help you reach there. Now, telling you that how to make your speech more connected. She quotes go to bahar kar diya. Data, humor. See, anything fails, humor will never fail. Data, humor, and personal favorite is a personal anecdote or story. If you are feeling that your speech is going very dull at some extent, always have a personal anecdote. Always have a data. Always have some sprinkles of humor. And last, always end with a call to action. We have to do that. Hope Thank that answers you. you. Thank yeah, you. that's it. Misha, you are on mute. Do you have something to ask? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah. Uh, can I ask something? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, actually, uh, so so I know that uh, my content is very good. I I means what I have wrote at uh, the speech. I know that I it's very good content, but my delivery is, does not connect with the audience. Uh, so I know this is a speech crafting. Uh, you are saying. About speech crafting, but still, as postmasters, I have been connected to this uh, postmasters club since four years. But still, 
my delivery is not as good as uh, means it should be by now uh, so how to overcome that okay so uh, i can give more inputs if i am able to see you speak or evaluate any of your speeches but at a preliminary level uh, i will give you a principle or a fundamental which can help you change just next time you are, you are speaking check the contrast what is a contrast it is a change leave it aside the content you said you are good at content i am not going to go there you see your voice modulation or body language and you see either you are at monotone that you are not changing it or you are contrasting it contrasting it can be very simple up down up down up down today when i am talking to nisha mohanta i am giving her some examples of how to do voice modulation and she will improve in the next topic so you see whether you are creating a contrast or not and that's a personal thing you have to do it yourself might be you take a video after it just check for the contrast people our minds are wired in such a way that we don't like monotonous speech we just go to facebook 2 3 minutes video every time it is changing why it is changing they know give them feed them different things give them contrast and they will be glued to you for the next week part we have to glue only uh, 20 minutes maximum that's a tedx speech that's why i hope i have answered you nisha and might be i can evaluate you some day and i can give you more inputs Uh, that would be give give me great pleasure and also some uh, idea about how means how to deliver my speeches more impactfully. Sure, Thank sure. you. Thank you so much. Anybody else would like to ask anything? Pramathesh, you want to ask something? Go ahead. Uh, hi. 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 yeah uh, first of all uh, like uh, it was a uh, very uh, good uh, sp- uh, speech uh, like but uh, i have been thank you uh, thank you professor uh, yeah i have been uh, in the media uh, like i used to write content so one of the main things was uh, like to grab the attention is the title of the story so why uh, why writing content the uh, the title of the co- content is how different it from the uh, title uh, uh, while speaking very good question pramesh uh, title of the story is also important in prose masters why as i said the moment you come on stage nobody knows who is dipankar or who is sanjana or who is gaurav nobody knows that you have to create your impact in your the first tool for you to create your impact is the 6 to 7 seconds you have but the title comes before that your title is announced even before you come on stage so you have to be more cautious about the title if you have to choose a title you have to see your self theme of your speech what is repeating again and again for example uh, what abhijit said democratic leadership or autocratic leadership the title of the speech let us explore leadership that can be a title of the speech i gave an example of crafting in terms of charity let us do charity here so title you can be as innovative as you want but keep in mind it should reflect the central idea in your speech it is important but i always feel the first 6 or 7 seconds of the speech crafting the creating the spice is a very important uh, thing there hope i have answered you pramesh yeah thank you Thank you so much. Would anybody else like to ask anything? All right. Thank you so much, Toshmaster Dipankar, for giving us your valuable valuable time. You have shared some beautiful insights, knowledge that you have gathered over the years uh, through your experience in Toastmasters, and we are lucky to have that served us in a plate. I am sure all that. knowledge and insight would be very helpful to our members when they are drafting their speeches for their projects as well as for for competitions and if to all the members i would like to say if you still have any more doubts or you come across some more doubts then toastmaster dipankar is always available and you can reach out to him through his mobile to get some personal suggestions i am sure without asking toastmaster dipankar i am uh, i am giving out that offer to all of you i am sure he won't mind that 
So if you have any queries or anything uh, in, in days to come, you can reach out to Toastmaster Dipankar and ask him personally. And I have, I have also been a club president, so I know your company. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> I don't mind. I have been creating humor at your expense for the all all this time. Yeah. To Toastmaster Dipankar, I would like to invite you again whenever you are uh, available to our club meetings. You attended with us sure, once. Sure. You were the evaluator, I believe. Yeah, you were the evaluator. I would like to invite you, give you this invitation to join us our club meetings whenever available. Our next meeting is this Sunday morning, 7:20, 7:30 a.m. So if you are available and you are awake, then do join us with a cup of coffee. We would love to have you. Yeah. On I would love to be there. Thank you so much. Bro. Thank you so much, Dipankar. And on that note, I would say the, the, that the purpose of this meeting is achieved. I wish all of you all the best in drafting fabulous speeches in days to come. I am sure all of us will enjoy that in our Toastmasters meeting. And thank you again, Dipankar, for that. With this, thank I'm you, Gaurav, and thank you, Toastmasters Club of Guwahati, for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance. With this, a big round of applause. And I would say this meeting is closed now. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah, right. Thank you. Bye-bye.